for most of their lives, the 1,200 fishermen who live in this village in the south of India describe themselves as slaves. Every one of them was in debt to moneylenders, a debt most had inherited from their fathers. Bharati Dasan inherited a debt of 50,000 rupees, about $800. After spending a minimum of 12 hours at sea, he had to hand over his entire catch to the moneylenders to service the debt. Bharati says the moneylenders were in cahoots with the local traders, who would set the price of the fish far below market value. He was not allowed to trade with anyone else or pay off the entire loan when he had a bumper catch. It was impossible to ever pay off what he owed. We were in a difficult situation. We even shed tears. Even though we were going to sea, we didn't have a happy and peaceful life because on the shore we didn't get a good price for our fish. And in 2004, this difficult situation was made even worse by the tsunami, which destroyed Bharati's boat and nets. He and his wife, Doga Lakshmi, could see no way out of the cycle of debt. We didn't have money for our expenses, so we borrowed more money with interest. When our child fell sick, we had to take her to the hospital. We didn't have the money, we had to borrow it. This is suffering. If it kept going like this, what would happen to our village and our people? We were very sad to think of our future in this village. Then three years ago, Bharati's neighbour Murugai and Manivanan heard that fishermen in a nearby village had formed a group called a fish marketing society through which they collectively paid off their debts. He went to see how it worked. And when he returned, he convinced Bharati and 90 others to join him. As a group, they finally had some bargaining power, and they convinced the village leaders to help them open up the sale of the fish to the highest bidder. When this happened, the corrupt merchants left the village. We could not have removed the merchants as individuals, since we acted as a group. They themselves walked out. The next step was to clear their debts with the moneylenders. To do this, they found support from a local project, which was actually set up to help fishermen recover from the tsunami. But the project team soon saw that the fishermen's debt prevented them from having a sustainable income, which is the only way they could recover from future calamities. It was very essential that we redeem them from this debt, so that they were in a position to then offer their catch for the best price. So the project, with support from the UN's International Fund for Agricultural Development, gave the fish marketing societies a lump sum of money to pay off the members' debts. Although they still need to pay back the money, the societies have appointed their own auctioneers. So every day, numerous merchants buy to purchase the daily catch. Previously, we were like slaves. Now we have freedom in selling. Everybody has this feeling. Now we're getting a good price for our hard work, and it's only possible due to our unity. Bharati had a bumper catch today, and he's happy with the price he gets at the auction. He collects his money at the society office, where a percentage is deducted to pay back his debt. He also pays for insurance, which has been collectively negotiated by society members. Even with these deductions, his income has increased by 30%, and he can send his children to a private school. In just one year, he's paid off his inherited debt and he's taken out a further loan to buy more nets. I was liberated from the slavery life. I feel very happy. I now have peace of mind. So far, the project has worked with more than 30 fish marketing societies, releasing over 1,100 fishermen from their debt to the moneylenders. With more societies set up each year, fishermen all along this coast will soon share Bharati's feeling of liberation. <laughs>
The vision of FEO aims to work together with local populations on how best to adapt current practices and how best to identify crop varieties which are uh, suitable for drier circumstances. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations started training farmers and developed systems of agriculture to enhance sustainable land use and water management. The system of rice intensification, SRI, is a new technology in rice production. Unlike the conventional method of continuous flooding of paddy fields, SRI involves intermittent wetting and drying of paddies. Once a paddy has enough water, it is released for use in the next paddy. Tree nurseries were established in Kiroka village to help create woodlots, conserve water sources and for economic purposes. After training, we started tree nurseries and later transplant the seedlings to the farms and areas without trees. The tree planting project was also introduced in schools. In class, we explain to our pupils what environment is and when we come outside, we show them the benefit of planting trees. Energy saving stoves were also introduced as part of the project and have reduced tree cutting by 80%. The energy stove has really helped me. It does not use a lot of firewood, cooks very fast, and it keeps the food warm. With energy saving stoves, firewood that lasted for a week now lasts for a month. Soil erosion is another climate change problem. We were taught about contours and how to measure them, how to plant bananas in order to strengthen the contours. From the training provided by FAO and SUA, Kiroka farmers have acquired skills that will last for generations. Our plan is to own large pieces of land with trees. looking at a total collapse of these markets. If you take any economy in the world and you take out number one, commerce, and you take out the logistics, everything will stop. I don't care where you are, everything will stop. In car, this is exactly what is happening. There are people crying when they pay you. There is a lot of insecurity. People cry when they come to the market to buy things. Civil servants have only been paid one month in the last six months. What are we going to do? How are we going to eat? Where are we going to sleep? You're seeing markets which are emptying up because either traders have left or the stocks are, are running out. In car there is no money because of the war and goods are not sold. I used to buy this on a Monday and it would be sold by Wednesday, but now it takes me a week to sell this fish. Prices have gone down and I'm losing a lot of money. It is about general population. Everybody either directly or indirectly is affected. And that is extremely concerning. I used to sell goods at kilometer five on the road, but now it's very hard to find food to sell there. There are too many clashes and I was unable to sell my goods. So I came here in the center to sell. Security is the most important thing. We're waiting for security here. They have the gold, they have the diamond, they have the timber, they have very, very productive land. But unfortunately, since their independence, uh, they have been immersed in conflict. So they have really never realized the, the, the potential which they have. 
C'est seulement ce que les gens veulent faire là. C'est pas bien. Parce qu'ils vont maltraiter et faire, faire du mal à, à les, les centrafricains. What people out there are doing is not good because they are mistreating and hurting car. That is why we need humanitarian aid to help us. If they don't send money now, they will be sending a lot more money later. From now onwards, every month, the cost of this operation is going to increase exponentially. Let's move, let's start, because if we don't do it now, as soon as the rainy season comes, the roads get blocked, then if you have to move whether food, whether agricultural inputs, anything, we are going to be doing it in a very difficult environment, and in the process, we are going to lose some innocent lives.